No, I do not have the KLX 300, but it is definitely on my scope. See, I have met someone with the KLX 300 and aside from me researching, this can be the perfect bike for many people, but take your time to hear me out. The KLX 300, I really have to admit, I am very intrigued with this bike. And it looks like Kawasaki might have something going on here as far as performance and maintenance going right dab in the middle. And based on research, it seems they have their center of gravity just perfect from reports. You don't feel the weight at all and people even reported how easy it is for them to pick up their bikes for the younger ones. Now you see, not everyone craves racing power, not everyone wants to change the oil and filter every three rides, and not many people care about racing performance like KTMs and high-end MX bikes, in fact they just want one bike they can keep for a very long time and have just enough power to get them through the day, but it's not terribly underpowered like the KLX250. But how about a bridge between the dual sport and race performance? And that is exactly what the KLX 300 is. Many people would say, why not just get the KLX 250 with less maintenance and a cheaper cost used? But I would say, would you prefer more power? More low end grunt? Lighter and something you can actually keep and not get tired of its power? How about less shifting when that steep hill comes out of nowhere? Oh yeah, and not to mention 60 hour oil change intervals per the manual. What's going on everybody? Ride with Will here. I got my Husky 701. And I kind of wanted to talk about the KLX 300R and what I think about it and, and stuff like that. You know, and I've been uh, researching a lot, uh, you know, been looking up on the forums and what people report of the KLX 300R. So people are reporting the KLX 300R as really like the suspensions were really uh, race techy, like, you know, like really race oriented, race ready. Look at that, that's pretty cool. It's around the little passage right here. Okay, here we go. Woo! Let me uh, get out of here, out of the way. So I honestly think it should have been the other way around. You wanted an entry, you know, an entry level bike. KLX 250 should have been like an entry level off-road bike, but the dual sport, the KLX 300 could have been, you know, an entry level, could have been an entry level dual sport. I think a lot of people, if the KLX 250 was the 300R, um, sure, they gotta meet all this emission crafts and all that stuff. I prefer honestly like my KLX 250 on this stuff just because it feels so light and nimble and it's a lot more comfortable the seats are lowered and you don't really need the power of the 701 here so here we are guys and this trail says I've never been out here I'm just exploring but perfect example is uh I want to make sure sure I have a really good bike and everything like that say you know I live in an area where 45 miles an hour it's about average 45 50 wow beautiful forest ride you know and i really want like the klx 300 to be you know to tackle some serious stuff i really want it to just be able to do anything i throw at it now you see the klx 250 produces around 24 ho horsepower but some dyno charts even reads 18 horsepower for the EFI models, while based on my research, the KLX 300 2020 produces 32 horsepower. But I get it, why not the uh, DRZ 400 with its 39 horsepower, or even the DRZ 400E with around 40-ish horsepower based on certain charts. Well, here is the thing, the KLX 300 is designed to have incredible low-end grunt. Some people even reported reaching third gear on very tight, steep single track, and they were impressed on its power delivery. No, not much high end or mid range, but plenty of low end for chugging along and being a lazy rider on third and fourth gear. Well, we all know the DRZ400 is still one of the best bikes to buy and still outperforms many dual sports in today's market as far as maintenance, power, and overall use. 
but the KLX300 has some fear competition with the DRZ. I mean, we're talking about 60 hour oil changes, 6 gears, comfort, and great ergonomics similar of that of the KLX250, but the KLX300 has much better suspension. A lot of people reported the KLX300 was felt very racy suspension, if that kind of makes sense. It's very good quality. Now to add on, see the DRZ400 has 5 gears which is fine if you mostly want to do trail riding and let's be honest, most trail riders barely never reach 4th gear until you trail hop and that is where the KLX300 has the DRZ400, yeah the 6th gear and no worries about it screaming down the road when you need to trail hop. It is mentioned the KLX300 has a pretty long 5th and 6th gear, making it ideal for states that allows plated dirt bikes like Colorado and this is why it's actually in my radars right now. But uh, one thing is for sure, this will definitely suit many people, heck you don't even need much power for single track but has enough to get you to your truck or the next trail and I believe this is what the KLX300 is designed to do. It is intended for serious trail riders that don't want to fuss with the maintenance and the experienced riders that know weight is not a huge issue for them but don't need all that KTM 500 power because realistically we probably don't. And to the ones who want to plate their bikes so they just can get to the next trailhead. This is what I believe the KLX300 is really designed to do. The power is not much different of a DRZ400. I've heard the grunt was more or less the same, so not to mention, look at the price tag.